Thanks for dropping in. This is 3D Printy, I'm Joe, and these are unused scraps of filament. Let's make some use out of them. If you're like me, and own a 3D printer, and have a slight tendency to hoard, you probably have a collection like this. These are the scraps of filament from a roll, just too little to actually make any use out of. Or they might be mismatched colors, or filament that was too low quality to keep messing with. It might be some rainbow transition filament that wasn't rainbow enough. In either case, I keep these on hand. If I need to level a bed or clear through a printer clog, rather than use filament that I care about, I'll grab one of these and use it to either shove the clog through the nozzle or to print leveling squares on the bed. But those situations don't come up that often, and I still amass a huge collection of these little bits of filament. So what can I use them for? In this video, I'm going to show some experiments that I printed to see what other ways I could possibly use filament in the future. So if you're interested in seeing how you can use 3D printed filament without a whole lot of 3D printing, stick around. For my very first experiment, I printed a series of very small holes, about 1.85 millimeters, and spaced about 3 millimeters apart. I figured I could use these to thread filament through to create interesting patterns in prints. Imagine a larger print which has this shape running through it. You can then thread filament of different colors to create an interesting transparent effect. It also could act like a hinge or a spring. There's not a whole lot of flex to it, but there's just enough that you could do something interesting with that. In 3D modeling, there's a concept called lofting. You take a series of shapes and you put them in a row. Each shape is usually uh, slightly different than the one that comes before it, or maybe it's just a different size. Then you sort of stretch a skin over those shapes to create an interesting form in the end. A real world example of this is when constructing a boat. This next experiment was an example of that. I took two rings, each with the same number of holes, and lofted filament between the two. Now, this was just a basic experiment. There's no real purpose or use for this specific form that I could think of, but it's sort of a good proof of concept that this could be done. And by adding more shapes, this could get far more complex and create more interesting forms. This next example uses the same larger ring as before, but in a different way. I just stretched filament over the surface to create this pattern. Now, if you have a 3D pen, a pen that lets you lay down filament uh, in three dimensions manually, you could use this as an initial form to lay your filament on top of. I'm not gonna use this example for anything. It's just another ring with filament zigzagging back and forth. I thought I could make something like a bracelet out of it, but it didn't quite turn out the way I'd like. If you've 3D printed for a while, you've probably heard of Ace Mode. This is a very different form of Ace Mode. I printed out these structural shapes that are around the side here and just spiraled the filament into the holes. And because I could, I chose different colors as I spiraled around. So this is a mix of gold, blue, and purple. If I were to create this again to share, I probably would make the bottom some sort of solid shape so it would sit more easily. As it stands right now, it only balances rather precariously and requires a little bit of coaxing. This next item started out as an idea for wire management. I created a series of rings, and if you look closely at one of these rings, they intentionally have gaps in them so you could feed wire in without running it all the way through the shape. You can gently alter the shape of the whole rail by changing where you have longer bits of PLA compared to when you have shorter bits. So if you have a shorter bit on one side and a longer bit on the other, you're naturally going to create a sort of curve. And now I have a complex turn that might be useful for some sort of setup. One requirement is that while you can have an end on one side where everything's flat, the opposite end 
needs to uh, allow for loose filament because when you bend it one way, you're obviously going to take up more filament on one side than the other versus if you bend it the other way. This could be interesting in a model of, say, like an elephant where you needed a trunk or something. It's stiff, but also poseable. So I liked how this came out a lot. I'm pretty obsessed about wire management, but sometimes a wire tie is just nowhere to be found. That's where this print comes in handy. It's the smallest one I've shown you so far. It's just two holes in a tiny rectangle. Run some filament through each hole and tighten as needed. The nice thing about this design is it's very reusable. And if a tie is not big enough, you can just take out this filament and replace it with a longer piece. There is a limit to how small this diameter can get, so keep that in mind. But it actually gets pretty small, surprisingly small, considering how brittle PLA can, can be. For some of these designs, I just threw together parts from other experiments to see what I could create. I have no idea what this would be useful for, but I could see it holding a stylus or a pencil on a desk. And that's all the filament experiments I have for this week. I don't know if I'm going to use these in any particular upcoming projects, but I figure these are nice tools to have. You never know what opportunities you might be missing if you don't experiment. I know I'll definitely be using these wire ties in the future. Do you see any other possible ways to use these techniques or any other techniques I should try exploring? If so, let me know in the comments. Until next video, thanks for stopping by.